built in a river ecosystem for one of the shortest lived fish species is not an ordinary fish tank. I even recreated a temporary pool below the river to simulate their full life cycle, including the dangers they face after months of working hard on this project and nearly giving up. This video shows how it all came together. I was about to throw this box in the bin, but I was feeling a bit of DIY, so I'm going to put my skills to the test and try and separate the tank into two halves. I didn't waste any time and I started tearing through it with this Stanley knife. Or at least the new one did. So far it's going well. I've cut the box up into four pieces. While I was out shopping, I found these surface protection sheets and placing them on the inside of the box. After piecing it all together and making a few patch repairs, I placed it into the tank to see if it would fit. Obviously, there's no need for a spirit level as it looks spot on. To add some finishing touches, I added a background so that I can fill it with expanding foam. This was the biggest bottle I could find. I was just thinking I'd rather have too much than not enough. I had to find a new spray foam online because the first one didn't work and it was half the price, so it was definitely worth a try. The foam takes a few hours to expand, so whilst I wait, I'm making some rock powder, and lots of it, I smash the rock into dust. One chunk at a time, I'm breaking it down into smaller pieces. I kept going, until the rocks were crushed into a fine powder. I added some sand, because it was taking too long to break it up. I wanted to carve the foam to make it look like the earth underground, almost like you were looking into a puddle. I made an opening at the front, so there's access to both areas. I'm using spray adhesive to attach some rocks. I'm hoping this weighs it down to stop it from flowing. Now it's time to put on the rock powder that I made earlier. The puddle was complete and looking at the landscape of a barren wasteland. To secure the foam into place, I'm filling the gaps with silica sand. There's a hole in the top to help with water circulation. And as a substrate, I'm using topsoil. This will provide nutrients to the plants. To blend the colors together, I'm sprinkling sand around the edges. The bottom was different. I'm adding a thin layer of peat, which is made up of decaying organic matter. To begin filling it up, I'm sprinkling water over the top. The tank is filling up slowly, but the peat is floating on the surface. I'm placing an air stone into the water, trying to get the peat to sink. There was immediately life in the tank. The peats become active, and even a fish appears, known as the annual fish, with a fascinating lifestyle, living in temporary pools of water. And every year they all expire, so with them all gone, how do they return? In this tank, I want to recreate their natural lifestyle, including the dangers they face. This isn't a hazard for Mother Nature. It's me breaking the tank. As soon as the water reached the top of the foam, it popped straight out of position. The fish were looking at me confused. I didn't even have a way to fix it, other than to pull it all out and start again. I actually rebuilt it seven or eight times trying different methods like spray adhesive and adding more rocks. In the end, I siliconed every anchor point I could find. Feeling positive, I even planted the top before filling the water up past the same line. It was a success, and I'm definitely out of silicon, but it did work. The fish are skilled jumpers, so I'm making them a lid. I couldn't find my tape measure, so I'm using this string tape. 
I didn't use a glass lid because I want the plants to grow out the top of the water. Each piece was measured out and cut with an electric saw. For the lid, I used a mesh which came with a roller to fix it into position. There's enough space for the tall grass to get through the mesh, although I did break some in the process. It's been weeks since I started this build, and now it's finally up and running. The tank was teeming with life, but the fish have reached their expiry date. They've evolved to their lifestyle in the wild. So let's have a closer look. In something as small as an elephant's footprint filled with water, colourful killifish can be found. In this small space, there's a hierarchy, and there will be one dominant male. It's best to keep a ratio with more females. The males are much more colourful, and whilst they're in this temporary pool, they're safe from predators in bigger rivers, but there's villains here too. Water scorpions, which can dissolve the flesh of fish. And now it's time to show its true colours, perfectly designed to jump into new waters. The females are even aggressive, and when the time is right, the males jump to new waters to find females, which is willing to defend against rival males, constantly active and searching for food. When they reach the river, they are joined by other fish, which stick together to form a tiny school. Whilst these fish are peaceful, there is still predators above, and they can become prey to reptiles and birds. They fed multiple times a day on bloodworms and live daphnia. Keeping them well fed triggers them into spawning. The ecosystem was maturing, the plants were growing in, the floating plants were expanding. Now there's one last thing and we have to go back to where we started. When the rain season is over and the water dries out, the parents will expire, but the next generation has been waiting safely. Inside the riverbed, just waiting to add water. And almost instantly, they appear.